I wanted to say something about this actually. I've just been watching this Russell Brand's um, latest live video. So, Alex Jones had quite a bit to say about the whole China regime and the whole social point system and the fact that it's kind of affecting all of us, you know, through TikTok and culture. It's even affecting a lot of people in this country. Behaviour. So, well, there's Dr. Campbell there. Can't really get this, these suggestions. If I was on my other phone, I'd be able to edit this videos. Um, so it's just got the brand bit at the top. But on this phone, you when it won't let you if you edit it, like the size of the video, um, you, you, you can only kind of like do it in the middle. Well, if you if you want to change the size of the video, it's fixed centralized basically so that means it doesn't have a subscribe button to be included um and not the top part so i just thought i'd mention that now while i'm speaking um the terracotta army the terracotta army it's something the um china's proud of you know all of the eastern kind of like um you know, the whole culture of the Far East, where even even Japan, really, um, China, Taiwan, all of those Oriental countries, I think, are quite proud of, you know, the Terracotta Army and the Great Wall of China. It, the Terracotta Army, when they're all formed and shaped, you know, it's meant to be really old and ancient. Um I think it's kind of like um, it. There's some sort of. I mean, there's something wrong about drilling. There's something really, really wrong about military drills. You know, <clears throat> it's something reserved for like you know Charles always. You know the the periods of the military. Um, I don't think that it's something to be proud of to do to drill. You know, soldiers. I mean. If we're fighting other countries, we need to be able to fight and train and so forth. And I suppose that is the pinnacle of kind of like um display of perfection, you know, polished shoes and then but then suddenly with the click of fingers, you know, um they can all jump into operations and all follow um strict strategies and plans like clockwork, even if it's, you know, like um in the trenches or whatever, everyone doing their exact training and job to perfection. But the fact is, you know, if we were that perfect, we wouldn't be at war with all these countries. And you, it makes you wonder what the diplomats are doing and then the rest of it. So, you know, this whole Alex Jones, I'm going to start referring it to the Alex Jones theory now because, like, it's, some, you know, it's the wars. Everyone's been, you know, talking about proxy wars. But Alex Jones is kind of like um, really... With his Tucker Carlson interview, um, I think it was five days ago, I only watched it the other day, he's really kind of emphasising on this underlying, you know, orchestration, that the fact that it is these, these wars are there to intimidate, threaten and distract us if we're not already distracted by, you know, the television and entertainment, um, while people are opposing them and coming together more and more, they, they need, you know, they need to play on the women by charity and, you know, through supporting all the immigrants and the, the war victims and asylum seekers and so forth, um, while scaring people. And also they try and keep a major par portion of us distracted by, you know, television soaps and so forth. I don't think generally British people are have a particular fondness or pride of this drilling, this regime drilling procedure. I think, you know, some people were talking about it when they all started coming outside and banging pans. And I can remember going to the park to do some exercise, um, you know, when they're all coming out every Thursday, eight o'clock, banging the pans. And some people were like, you know, calling them sheep or pan, pan bangers. Um, I think now they wouldn't be doing it. Um, I think, you know, now with the whole Robert F. Kennedy, Russell Brand, um, you know, movement, I'm not calling it, it's not their movement, but, the, you know, the, you know, 
the position that, you know, Alex Jones, Robert F. Kennedy, Russell Brand, you know, these people are on the side of, you know, Jimmy Dore, George Galloway and so forth, I don't think people now would be banging the pans, particularly after what we know about the whole pandemic and lockdown. Um, you know, I think it was, it really, really was um, almost like, you know, a military kind of like feeling. But definitely, you know, why, do the, why are the Chinese so proud of it? You know, you see them all lined up like this and then they're all, while they're walking forwards, they're turning their head sideways. It's almost like they're displaying how well they can walk in one direction while looking in the other direction and saluting. It's continental United States to Asia to defend Taiwan. You even see, and so what China. You even see like the women um, doing it as well. You know, like all these like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of women all marching and then like you know looking to the right while they're mar marching, you know, forwards and looking sideways and saluting. But yet we can't even apparently now reverse backwards properly um, without having a sensor behind or a rear-facing camera or something like that. Apparently we're not, we're not um, capable of doing it. Um, I think everyone has accidents now and again. Um, but, you know, really, they're few and far between. And does it necessitate losing whatever awareness and skills you've got when you use them. It's like maps, you know, map reading and then uh, p having a picture of somewhere in your mind. And then what's the point even thinking about it and contemplating it in your mind if the, the device is telling you, don't worry about that, don't think about that, you know. Um, don't think about, you know, where you're going visually in your mind and where it is. Um, you know, let, let them just follow the sat-nav. So you're removing information from the mind. I think Elon Musk likes to think that his devices are making you more clever, like they're exercising your brain. Like the whole, um, you know, there used to be a book called Brain Gym where, you know, you cross your hands over and do loads of exercises. I think Musk, Musk really, really wants it to be like that. I think that, but he, he's not doing anything along those avenues from what I've seen. He, he just, he, he, you know... Um, there's a lot of regeneration process you can do through exercise, nerve regeneration, brain regeneration from practicing um, dexterity and overlapping, kind of like getting on towards what Wim Hof does, but slightly different. Um, you know, uh, I think Elon is all about, you know, getting the, the tech in there and, and it's all with the tech. Um, but this uniformity of humans, yes, it's useful if you want the whole country to run like clockwork and believe it's a clock, believe that it, it is a clock, you know, and, and humans are like, you know, beehives for some strange reason. But we shouldn't be at war with other countries and we shouldn't be making weapons and you, we, therefore we shouldn't need to drill. And even if you had a perfection, like, you know, even if every cobbler and shoemaker was operating to perfect clockwork perfection in their daily life, they're, they're wanting to get rid of those so we don't have to do those jobs. Um, so the machines can do it and not us. But then what we left to do, not think about it, because they've got AI to think of ideas and pictures and all of the thinking and philosophy side of it, you know. Um, I don't think they want us to think about it. But I'm, I'm quite sure, you know, where does this pride you know come from from you know the orient and, and i actually i really think that that terracotta army has got a lot to do with it um it's kind of like a symbol it's almost like here we've got stonehenge yet and we've got the sun newspaper yet you know it's not much of a representation of stonehenge the sun newspaper i don't think anymore and they're wanting to hide, you know, they're wanting to, um, people not to see Stonehenge anymore um, and claiming they're going to surround it by countryside, even though they've got to get rid of the world heritage status in order to do that, you know. Um, it, w it will fall out, even if you create a magical and special place, it's going to fall out of the public awareness, you know, if people don't see it when they're going past it, you know. Uh, and then they'll probably charge people, you know, money to go there, probably even more money, you know. Um I don't, I don't think that, you know, all this military drilling and marching is anything to be proud of. But saying that, 
it's true that, you know, if we would have had that level of organisation on a military level, probably we wouldn't have got invaded. But that's the reason we did get invaded and conquered uh, by the Romans, because um, we, we didn't have um, the military. But then again, even if the humans would have been able to perform um, function and rank, we didn't actually have the shields, did we? We didn't have the shields, we didn't have the uh, armour, we, we didn't have the physical material things in, for that. So we, we didn't have the weapons, did we? We didn't have the toys. Um, but saying that, it makes you wonder... What about the Germans? I mean, the thing with the Roman Empire versus the Germans is that they didn't have the extra ocean, the obstic, the obs you know, they didn't have the ocean in between. It makes you wonder why the hell the Roman army didn't conquer the Germans, you know, were they just more crazy in battle? There's meant to be some reports of battles, you know, major battles that the Romans lost against the Germans, but was there some deal going on between them that was unwritten, uh, un unsaid, you know, when they wanted to take over, you know, Britain and the Druids? Um, or was it just true fact that, you know, they were just, you know, in battle, they didn't have the Roman um, equipment and they didn't have the um, same regime, but they were just, you know, better warriors. Um I, I tend to think that because of, you know, Queen Katamundua uh, wanting, taking side in with the Romans uh, eventually and, you know, that they're on our part of it, we don't know the full facts and truth other than what some, you know, Roman um, generals wrote down. I think that we were more softer as we usually are and more sympathetic and I think that it was more of a altruistic kind of conceding and we didn't really have an option. I know there was some resistance and fighting, you know, the whole way through, but some some of them did take the Roman side, didn't they, um, and, and support um, the conquest. So I, I don't, you know, it, it's... We don't know all of the facts for sure because not everything was written down. Only some things were written down and we don't know which part of it was absolute truth or not. Um, you know, there's something strange. It is very, even if, you know, the Germans were purely, you know, superior warriors um, and fierce in battle, it, it may, you would have thought that the, the obstacle of the English Channel, the ocean, and the fact they've got to sail across it to get reinforcements and to get people across, you would have thought that itself would have been more of an obstacle for them invading and, you know, taking it all the way up the country and also get building Hadrian's Wall and the rest of it, it didn't get to Ireland, than no ocean at all for an obstacle against the Germans. It was just pure ferocity and, and manpower you know it, it, there's something it doesn't seem to make sense to me i i don't i don't get you know why you would have really would have thought because if you look at the rest of the roman empire it only goes around you know the coast of africa i know that the desert's really hot um you know and and so forth but really you know, all along, you know, around the Mediterranean, it, it's contained. I mean, if you think, well, what's what place is worth going to and where's worth taking over? Why didn't they go, you know, right over into India or, you know, over to China instead? Why, why us? Why, why come towards us? And I think that it really was um, a, a religious target and not just taxation. I mean, they, they could have... You know, there were other directions the Roman army could have pursued um, for money and resources and metals. I really think that we had something with the religious order and it was, uh, we didn't need, the, the thing is, we had a certain society in place that didn't need all of those physical manifestations of weapons. It was the psychological and spiritual order which kept the whole Celtic culture 
in place. And I think that in order to, because I think because the psychological and moral order was so strong that the Romans noticed they couldn't overthrow it by their own ideological religion and cultures. Notice that. It had to be a physical army with uh, a special military um, tactics and um, way of doing things. It had to take physical... It physically had to take um, ground by physical force. Uh, they noticed they couldn't do it through merely through propaganda, through religious um, practice, through psychology. They only could do it through a physical enforcement and apparently not even strong enough to do it in Germany, yet they managed to do it physically over the ocean, which I do. You know, there's something more... Going and, and the objective t- to actually remove that order of um, rulership, well, governance, um, law and order, you know, through, through druid judgments and the whole spiritual practice, which they really wanted to erase it and get rid of it, it seems, you know, um, it, it, there's something... To me, I I'm scratching my head when you know it's getting to the point. You know, if, if the Romans were really that opposed, why didn't they? Um, you know, I, I don't. It doesn't make much sense why they didn't get into Germany, into Germany uh, properly, when you know it, it was a lot easier for them just to cross the ocean and take us out here, which means that we weren't fight we can't have been fighting as fiercely as the germans and there's so there's so much in the records that we many of them sided with the romans um you know they, they chose to side with them even though we, we were meant to have you know like this culture in place this, this governance in place um it seems like it it, it the it ended up did it did end up um, causing a fraction and a break uh, and, and, and a disagreement, and I think that therefore the military objectives were religious, and the military objectives weren't just for to collect taxation money for Rome, you know. Um, So you know, for for this whole to be proud of military rank, we, we in our country, really, I mean, we we never had this drill, this this regime drill, you know, when the Romans, and we never had this regime drill, even in um, even after the Romans, and even after the medieval. Um, well, after the Anglo-Saxon period, even way after that, we 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 still didn't. And then you know you've got this whole Battle of Hastings. Well, you know they, they hardly came over with the Roman army in the Battle of Hastings. You know, even though apparently you know it was a you know it wasn't just done and dusted. Then there was you know opposition the whole time up the country, but it, it was you know. It seems that they used, you know, the religion quite a lot, building these very, very sturdy churches, monasteries, um, very, very well built. Um, you know, the Normans developed all all the more sturdier, uh, um, um, you know, religious buildings and so forth, which played a big role in it all. I don't think that we really, our heritage and country has got anything to celebrate in drilling because the only drilling that there ever was uh, is when we got an, when we got whooped, basically, when we got beaten. So any drilling and regimented form, formation like is, is a celebration of being conquered. Now, I know that with the war, World War II and World War I, obviously, you know, Churchill and all that, um, you know, we won the war. But saying that, um, a lot of the war was not 
done in this country and it was you know fought through planes and and boats and so forth and and strategically and there were other countries involved not just us it, it wasn't you know there was america involved and you know france and so forth you know the only thing that um drilling has ever really represented and symbolized is um basically taking over other places um you know beating other forces other countries and now our governments you know want into a, a world claiming it want you know Klaus Schwab's wanting to have a new world order, you know, where there are no countries. And so, well, there's a point in having weapons and, you know, um, warfare, you know? It, 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 you don't amass an army. If you, if you aren't interested in war and if you aren't interested in taking over countries, you don't form an army because um, it doesn't interest you. And maybe that was our problem in the past. But saying that, yeah, if you've got an army, you can defend yourself. But, you know, it, it, I don't think drilling and regimentation is ever for the purpose purely of defence because it wasn't for the Romans. And if, 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 if you know, it, it's not... I don't think that it's ever... There, sorry, this is to protect and defend our country, you know. I don't think it is because, you know, we had the, you know, Maiden Castle. It is there for protection and defence. It definitely isn't for, <coughs> big pardon, going out and um, conquering places, I don't think. I mean, China, they've got the Great Wall of China, haven't they? What's meant to keep all the Mongols out, but then it's, it's one big path to travel across. The, the country, you know, it's more than really if it's a big rule, it's more f for you. But if it's that dangerous, someone really, you know, right close to the air, traveling backwards and forwards on it. We don't have a terracotta army, so you know, I'm not proud of drilling and soldiers, it's not something that I'm interested in, and I think the, the the Chinese like it. I mean, even though apparently, you know, we, you know, we we sent ships and you know, um, cannon them and so forth, which is quite interesting. After they're the ones who came up with invented fireworks, you know, they had all the samurai warriors and so forth. But that I think I do think that terracotta army is, I think, it, it it's something that. I think they will kind of like and be aware of in their kind of like cultural consciousness, kind of in the same way that, you know, we've got Stonehenge in, in a way and things like that. Um, it, it, I think Terracotta Army is something that, what, it, I think that is why they don't seem to mind too much this whole, why they've allowed themselves to get into this social point system and the whole, because, you know, like, I, I think they kind of believe, like, you know, we are one sort of thing. I think they like, I I think that the Orientals, they, they, they kind of like the idea of, you know, like, um, Rob, what Robert F. Kennedy has just said, he said that, you know, I will be the sledgehammer. He says that, you know, you can pick the, you, we, we, you know, use, Kennedy's claiming that we use him as as, as a tool or instrument, you know, like that he will be the hammer if we, we lift him up, you know. But I think that with, with the... With the Orientals, I really do think that, you know, they kind of like this idea, like, you know, in the Matrix of, you know, when all the swarm comes together and forms the face, I kind of, like, think they believe that, you know, we you know they, we are China, you know, the, the whole... Everyone has to kind of, like, you know, come together, almost like, you know, Brian May and Starfleet, um, you know, when all the robots fit together to make the big man. It, it's almost like, you know... You know, like when apparently we used to have the Wicker Man, you know, but when, when but I, I think that was only for war victims, to be honest, for war prisoners, um, you know, but for, for a big person out of everyone. Um, I really think that they kind of like the idea 
they do like the idea that they are one machine and they all play a part in the machine. And really, that is their entire purpose. Um, rather than, you know, debating or arguing. We've all... I've, we, we had our separate clans, you know, and, and we had, you know, different um, laws all around the country. I don't really necessarily think that is a bad thing, but, you know, if you cannot debate and if you cannot argue and if you cannot even think, you see, what's the point if we're losing our ability to... to um, Reflect on things. This is the thing, in, and when these big corporate entities are taking over in business and so forth, you know, we'll think of the questions and we'll think of the answers. It, it learning, and you know, our prime minister is always going on about progress, 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 and technology development. But then he claims that he wants children to get better at maths because they've lost maths. But you know, now we've got professional head teachers saying that there's no intellectual procrastination or, you know, um, challenge, debate in the teacher's office, you know, it, it's no one wants to think or criticise anything, you know, it's that critique, um, self-critique even, and our ministers definitely don't self-critique, that's for sure. Um, I mean, just look at the petitions committee, for example, you know, it... it, it I think we're losing our self-reflection at the end of the day. It, 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 but when it's sport, they kind of like this competitiveness. But notice in sport, you're all doing the same thing. I think the reason why they like the Olympics, because when you're running, everyone's running. Okay, right, we're up. Right, we're going to run now, and this is what we're doing. We're running, and you were all run. So they're all trying to run the fastest. I think how the Tory and Labour like it, it's kind of like if Labour was an Olympic sport, then Keir Starmer, you know, when everyone's trying to do their best at Labour, um, Starmer's happy. You know, this is what we're doing. You know, th this is, you know, build, you know, build powerhouses, you know. For Johnson and, and Sunak, it's like, you know, who can make the most money? Who can make the most profits? Who can, you know, make the best products and technology well I'm winning I'm winning you know it's it's that's the name of the game but to criticize the the game what what is the objective what is the game right this is running this is high jump this is you know um you know water polo or whatever it is they're doing in the Olympics right that's what we're doing the thing is they want to be the ones who set the game and the objective and then they want us to compete to see who who, who can perform best, you know, who, 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 you know, and unfortunately that locks you in, oh, we've introduced a new sport into the Olympics, now surfing, you know, well, should we all even be competing in sports, you know, you know, um, this is it, there, I don't think it's on their table, or even, it, it, it's, the thing with the, Business. I mean, what if you suggested the concept that, well, maybe profit's not good, you know, maybe we shouldn't have profits, you know, oh, CBCDs, no, just not CBCDs, not um, Bitcoin, not even anything, just like, you know, how about, you know, we don't need to have a profit. Um, if you'd spent that much money on working out a system where, you know, people can contribute, you know, skills and making things because they want to, you know, it's like in China, you know, okay, I've just said that they all are keen to be part of the machine. They're all keen to be part of the 